I mean, you have to work. That's, you know, that's something that no one can do for you. everyone, welcome to Fluorescent. Today I'm joined by Blanca Molna, who is a theatre maker and actor trainer. So I was wondering, Blanca, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm, um, I'm a Hungarian theatre maker. I live in London and um, my background is um, in acting. I started as an actor when I was a teenager and I did an, um, did an acting course in Hungary. And when I moved to London, I um, came up live theatre course at Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. Um, and I, I really like the applied theatre approach to, to theatre and really thinking about the community. Uh, but then I uh, realised that I haven't got enough um, tools really to, to make as good quality theatre that I would like to. Um, and so I needed to learn more about how I train actors. So then um, I did an MA in um, actor training and coaching. So you recently started your own theatre company in London and I was wondering how did that all start? So there, were, there is quite, um, quite a big Hungarian community in London. Um, and there are different sort of interests. There, there is a, a folk dancing company. There are loads of Hungarian schools, weekend schools. There are loads of loads of interests that people can find and join. But what I observed over the years that these communities are not really talking and communicating with each other, and there isn't a platform for them to sort of connect because they are looking for obviously company that they share their cultural inheritance in and obviously use the language and and talk about important things in in our own native language um so i i also wanted to do something for the hungarian community and and create a platform for these smaller communities to sort of unite and i thought how i mean the theater show is great for it because um they all come and watch a theatre, then we go down to a pub and have a conversation and and we can all be together and it doesn't need to be a, a certain event uh, from any of these companies. So your theatre company brings together Hungarian people who are living in London to create theatre work, but your theatre work is also in Hungarian language. Yes, yeah, yeah. For now, we only create in Hungarian. Um, but um, we translated our first show um, to English. We haven't got a chance to start rehearsing, obviously, of the current situation, uh, but it's, it's in our plan to um, really work in English as well. Um, we started to do um, workshops um, for, for anyone really who's interested in, in various um, aspects of theatre. We've got loads of professionals from uh, filmmaker to a musician to a puppetry artist so we uh, movement and and loads of loads of very very interesting talents um in the company and uh we uh we, we hosted uh workshops for well, now it's also in hungarian but um some of them were uh, advertised in english as well so it, it's probably for everyone who's, who's interested in um, working collaboratively and and learning a bit more about how we work. For you, I guess, having a Hungarian theatre company, how important do you feel that it is for accents um, and language to be represented in theatre, even in London as well? So when we created the company, it was it was super interesting to put accents on stage. So our long-term goal is obviously create work in English as well, but you have to have like a proper English pronunciation, not RP obviously anymore, but yeah. you still have like a really good English accent. Um, how many times have you seen anything with a, with a foreign accent in, in London stages? Um, it doesn't really exist. And it's so important that if you travel around London, every second person has an accent. 
and it's not represented on stage whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Not from the actors, so it's not like a diverse um, scenario of actors, but even if it is, um, if there is some sort of accent, it's, it's from a native speaker trying to do a different accent. And I think it's very important to show, um, to, put, to put accents on stage. This is how we can, you know, um, stop this um, all like, oh, oh, you and us sort of yeah. aspect of looking at things. And obviously there are so many nationalities in London and if they get to know a little bit where we're coming from, it's not going to be so alienated and it's not going to be the foreigners, but it's, it's going to be something that you understand and you have experience with. Um, so I think in terms of like educating um, different nations also about Hungarian community and society um, and who we are, because obviously you cannot say that a nation is like that because the nation is our individuals really um so yeah once you've got to know someone you're going to look at that nation a little bit differently so i guess what's the main thing that inspires you when you're creating work in your theater company oh it's the people really if the people that i'm working with they're wonderful wonderful um their individuality their uh everybody's experiences everybody's all own viewpoints that they bring in and somehow it, it becomes one but everybody's still keeping their own identity and it's, it's just something wonderful that always inspiring me whenever we have like a discussion and we have disagreements because we have loads of disagreements those really inspire me that everybody can express themselves and and we can have those arguments um, yeah, they're really, really inspiring. In your time of being an actor, trainer, a theatre maker, applied theatre practitioner, um, what's the biggest thing that you've learned so far? Is that probably that I, I don't need to know everything all the time, because uh, I think loads of people are assuming that, um, yeah, I have to do this, I have to know it. It's okay if I don't, and um, it's okay to ask for help. And it's okay to um, to say to my students or to my company that, guys, I have no idea. Let's figure this out all together. Uh, and then they probably say a sentence or two and I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. Yes, of course I know this. So it's being in a community where it's not all your responsibility and um, and it's not expected from you to solve, it, solve all the problems, really. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the biggest learning thing, and and obviously to compromise always, because um, in in a creative process, loads of people have different um, ideas about their um, their creative way of making anything, um, and maybe my way or someone else's way is different, but we still work together and. We respect each other's opinions and we compromise and um, I think that's that's important. What advice would you give to aspiring artists or or other creatives? Oh well <laughs> um what advice would I give them? Um I mean you have to work that you know that's something that no one can do for you and you have to have loads of self self discipline um and you've got to learn so it's never it's never a thing where you can stop learning and you know it's true for me also i have so many things to learn uh in front of me and um yeah and it, it's a process don't be too hard on yourself because you know no one knows everything definitely uh but yeah once you're you're putting in the work it really shows and there is a wonderful saying in um in viewpoint um viewpoint technique and it is um it's something that it really inspires me all the time so i'm just going to share it hopefully it it will grasp someone else as well um it's hold on tightly let go lightly 
so um, I think it speaks for itself. And if people wanted to check out more about your theatre company, where could they go? Uh, so it's called Hub Art Theatre Company. Um, um, we have a Facebook page and an Instagram page where the Hub Art Theatre Company. We also have a website that is Hub Art, so that's H U B A R T dot co, so that's just C O, um, where we have um, videos and pictures of our performances and all the latest updates. Um, so yeah, everyone, everyone can check us out on social media.